If you're looking to implement hit scan guns into your game, this is a tutorial you need to show your bullet trails. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. We're gonna talk about raycasting bullets and showing where that bullet's gonna to go today. This is something I've had a lot of questions about and I've seen a bunch of questions about how to do and haven't seen a lot of really good tutorials on it so far. Ever since I did the rigid body bullet trails video, this has been what I've been wanting to get to. The basic concept is whenever you wanna fire, instead of creating some new game object that's a bullet that has rigid body and go somewhere, you use physics.raycast instead, and that'll go and determine if it hit something. If it has hit something, then what we're gonna do is have a trail render go from wherever the bullet shot from to wherever the hit is. Once it makes impact, we'll spawn the impact particle system. You might think that's a little bit weird because if you use physics to raycast, it happens immediately in one frame. We're gonna talk about some different options on how to manage that a little bit later in the video. Hey, and just really quick, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael and Andrew Bowen for being the silver tier supporters. I am so grateful. Thank you. For this demo, we're going to leverage the Starter Assets third person character controller. That is a free asset that Unity offers on the Asset Store. This does require that you use Unity 2020.3 or higher. So if you're using an older version, you will not be able to open this project with that version. And if we click play, we can see that I have this little minigun and I can run around the scene with WASD and moving the mouse to look around. This is just the default prefab that they give us. I haven't really customized anything here at all. On the player capsule, there is a player input that has the starter assets input action asset. If we double click on that, it'll open up a new panel that I'll dock to the bottom. This is using the new input system. So what I'm gonna do is add a new action called shoot. The name of this is very important with the scripts that we're gonna create a little bit later. So if you change this name, make sure you understand the impact that's gonna have when we do the player action script. Now we've created the shoot action. We'll add a new key binding. We'll make it be left mouse button. So whenever we left click, we will be able to shoot. We'll also mark this as a keyboard and mouse control scheme. If we then again select the player capsule, go to the player input, we'll see that. That the behavior is send messages, which means you now see there's a send message that will get called on all scripts on this game object called on shoot, in addition to all these other ones that are there. And for this tutorial, we're only gonna create two new scripts, one called gun and one called player action. And before we actually jump to Visual Studio, I'm going to attach the player action to the player capsule game object, and I'm going to attach the gun to the minigun game object. We'll then open up the player action in Visual Studio. In this class, we're going to add a private gun gun. That's a serialized field so we can hook it up in the inspector. And we're going to implement that on shoot. That's going to get called when we click the left mouse button by the new input system. And in there, we're going to do gun dot shoot. That's all that we're going to do here. So we're not handling the whole mouse button down. This is just whenever we left click once, we will shoot one bullet. Let's hop over to the gun script so we can start defining the functions like shoot that need to happen over there. In here, we're going to add a require component type of animator because our guns need to be animated. And we're gonna add a bunch of private serialized fields here. First, a bool called add bullet spread. Set that to be true by default. If true, we're gonna add some randomized bullet variants so we're not always shooting in a perfectly straight line. A vector three bullet spread variants, which we'll set to be new vector three, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 by default. And what that means is we'll have up to 20% variation from the straight forward of our gun added in if add bullet spread is true. You can of course adjust this to make it less or more random depending on what kind of gun you're implementing. We'll put a particle system called the shooting system that will play every time that we shoot. That's gonna be like the muzzle flash. A transform, the bullet spawn point. So we're not actually spawning bullets in this one, but we need to choose a point that we'll be doing a raycast from because we don't wanna raycast from the center point of our gun. Most likely that's not where the bullets would come out of. So we're gonna add in this transform to choose where that should come from. A particle system, the impact particle system. That'll be the particle system that we play whenever the bullet makes impact with a target or we're really good, just gonna spawn it wherever the raycast hits. A trail renderer, bullet trail. That's gonna be the visualization that we show to the player of where their bullet would be going without actually spawning a bullet. A shoot delay, we'll set that to be 0.5 by default. This will be how long we're gonna wait in between shooting. So we don't just let the player spam left click as much as they want and get a faster rate of fire. A layer mask mask, that'll be the layers that we can hit with our raycast bullets. And finally, two private fields that are not serialized, an animator, the animator that we said we require, and a float, 
last shoot time, which we'll use to work with that shoot delay. On awake, we'll grab a reference to that animator with animator equals get component animator. We'll scroll down a little bit and define a public void shoot that we're calling from player action. We'll check if the last shoot time plus the shoot delay is less than the time dot time. Then we're going to do some stuff. And in this video, we're not going to use object pooling just to really keep the video focused on what we're trying to do. I have two other videos you can check out if you don't know what object pooling is or you want to see how you could implement it. I'll put those in the comments right here. There's a card up on the screen and links in the description below. Check those out if you don't know what object pooling is or don't know how to implement it. We're going to set the animator bool is shooting to be true. That's a parameter I've added to the animator that will transition to the shooting state, which I'm just going to have it rotate since it's a minigun whenever it's shooting. We'll play the shooting system with shooting system.play. That's going to be that muzzle flash again. We'll define a vector three direction equals get direction. We're going to define that in just a second. That's going to be the direction that we're going to shoot this raycast from though. We're going to do if physics.raycast bullet spawn point dot position direction out raycast hit passing in float dot max value for the range of this raycast and finally that layer mask mask at the end. That's raycasting from that bullet spawn point that we provided, going in some direction with that randomized or not bullet spread. If that returns true, we're gonna populate that raycast hit hit with the hit information. If that hits something, we're gonna do trail render trail equals instantiate bullet trail at the bullet spawn point dot position with quaternion dot identity rotation. That way our trail starts exactly at the point that bullets would spawn from. And what we're gonna do then is start a coroutine to spawn the trail, passing the trail in the hit. One last thing we can't forget is to set the last shoot time to be the time dot time. Before we get into what that coroutine is gonna do, let's define that get direction with private vector three get direction, where we'll define a vector three direction to be the transform dot forward. And if we have decided we do wanna add bullet spread, we're going to do direction plus equals new vector 3, where we're going to choose a random range from negative bullet spread variance.x to bullet spread variance.x. That's why I was giving you that 20% earlier. We're going to duplicate that line for y and z, so that way we're choosing 20% in any direction. And then we're going to normalize the vector so that way it comes back to be a real direction, because direction vectors should always be normalized. We'll then return the direction. So if add bullet spread is false, we'll just use the transform forward. Otherwise, we're going to add in some random variance from the gun's current forward. Let's finally define that spawn trail with private i enumerator spawn trail that accepts a trail render a trail and a raycast hit hit. First thing we'll do is define a float time to be zero a vector three start position to be the trail transform dot position and we'll say while time is less than one trail dot transform dot position is going to be vector three lerp from the start position to the hit point so we're going to move the trail render from wherever it spawned to that hit point over some time and that time whenever we're using lerp has to go from zero to one so what we're going to do is do time plus equals time dot delta time divided by the trail time so we want this trail to be a really short duration in my case i'm setting it to be 0 0.1 so one tenth of a second so what that's going to do is make our time for this coroutine go 10 times faster. We'll yield return to null so that way we go every frame. Once we finally move that trail to that hit point, we're going to set the animator bool is shooting to be false. We're going to set the trail transform dot position to be exactly at that hit point, and we're going to instantiate the impact particle system at the hit point using quaternion.look rotation hit dot normal for the rotation. What that's going to do is make sure that our impact particle system is facing the exact same direction as the normal of what we hit, meaning directly out from that mesh. Finally, we're going to call destroy trail.gameObject with the trail.time. Since trail.time is is how long it takes for that trail render to fade out. We want it to be fully faded out before we destroy it. That's all the code that we need to write. Let's hop back to the Unity editor, hook up these references, and take a look at how it works together. Before we start trying to hook up everything though, let's take a look at this trail. So I have this prefab called hot trail that you can see the width starts at 0 0.1, goes down to 0 0.05. The time is 0 0.1, as I was saying earlier. And I have the color set to be a relatively transparent white. So that way it's using the material color and we're just making it a little bit transparent. I select the hit effect from the effect examples, weapon effects, prefabs. We shoot off a little spark impact and a little bullet decal whenever a particle system plays. It is not looping and it only emits one time. I pulled this from the metal impacts prefab from the Unity particle pack asset on the asset store. There's another free asset that Unity provides themselves that has some really good high quality particle effects in them. What I've done is taken the metal impacts, I've unpacked it, and then messed with the particle system a little bit to achieve this. The most important thing out of all of this is that the stop action is destroy. So I'm not using object pooling and I want my scene to stay clean. I need the particle system to be destroyed after it's played. If I select the player capsule, the player action script is there. We're going to drag the minigun to that gun reference. And on the minigun, on the gun script, I'm going to drag the muzzle flash 
to the shooting system and the bullet spawn point because I want the bullets to spawn at that location. I'll drag that hit effect I was just showing to the impact particle system and that hot trail to the bullet trail. The shoot delay I'm going to change to be 0.1 since a minigun shoots pretty quickly and I'm going to set the mask to be default only. One other thing I want to mention is that the hit effects and the trail renderer are on the transparent FX layer. If we go ahead and click play and I just start spamming left mouse button, you'll see that my minigun starts turning. You get this muzzle flash. These bullets are kind of flying all over the place. And I think it looks pretty good. You can see the path that the bullet would be taking. The impact shows up only after the trail renderer hits there and the sparks fly from wherever we're hitting. Those of you that have been paying attention very closely throughout the entire video can tell that there's going to be some kind of delay between whenever the player first presses fire and they detected they hit something and when that bullet impact particle system will play. And you might think if something is moving very quickly that impact will play somewhere where that object is no longer at because in 0.1 seconds something could have moved far enough away to no longer be in that same position. It looks really great in this scene because nothing's moving so it plays very nicely. And there's a few ways that you can address that. You can use physics.overlap and then choose your shape here and determine if the object that you hit in the first place is still within some range with the, whatever the physics.overlap gives you and then count it as a hit still. You can do it where the bullet trail just follows towards that point and have that particle system play immediately and make whatever you hit take damage or whatever there. That would also be okay, but then you're playing the impact particle system before the tracer actually gets there. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.